This is a continuation of Chapter 9 of Survive, The Atlantis Grail, Book 4, by Vera Nazarian. Let Gwen do it, Aeson says suddenly. Let her do the whole king sequence. The Imperator glances up at me momentarily, then again ignores me, his son and even the Faricon on the other monitor. His single-minded focus is now on the screen with the grail, as he grasps that monitor on both sides with his fingers and leans in closer, staring fiercely. And then the Imperator begins to sing. First, the simple C, E, G, King sequence, three times. And then he sings the intricate imperial oral block. Our nervous tension fills the room. We listen while the Imperator's darkly powerful voice cuts and carves the air into tonal shreds like a blade of punctuated intent. And again, just as before, the arc ship responds. First, the humming stops as the ship listens for input. Then the lurch of profound low sound comes, followed by the gathering power wave, which transforms, rising into a supersonic shriek and disappearing with a boom. In its place, there is once again silence. Romhutat Cassiope looks up and glares at all of us with a dark, triumphant expression. Then he rests his gaze on Arivictet Heru. Now you see how it's done, Heru, and you can hear the actual result. Still don't believe me? Well, now check your own end again and tell me if it worked. The raw disk should be inactive. The, the Farikon grunts, and his wrinkled face moves away, as we see him fumble with his own second monitor and get a fleeting glimpse of the hands of his young assistant. Then he returns with a reluctant nod. Yes, Cassiope, it is again shut off. Precisely, the Imperator concludes with satisfaction. But for how long? The Farikon says, his voice again regaining its rasp, which is apparently his normal public demeanor. I don't trust this command of yours to provide permanent results. Let us wait and see. Suit yourself, the Imperator says, and a muscle twitches in his jaw. And so we wait. The Imperator drums his fingers on the surface of his desk, while Aeson looks at me reassuringly. Then, after about thirty extremely uncomfortable seconds of silence, makes polite small talk with the Farikon. How is the weather in Zoes tonight, Farikon Heru? Aeson says comfortably. Not too cold? I hear your techs have been having some trouble with maintaining the coastal atmospheric pressure balance in the Gulf of Eos this season. But Arevik Tethero is in no mood for pleasantries. If you want to know about our barometric stats, Commander, look it up. Don't make light of this very grave situation, and don't evade the subject at hand, young Cassiope. I want this raw disk and your grail situation resolved is all I care about right now. Is that clear? Very, Aeson replies, still calm and composed. We want this resolved as much as you do. Huh. The Farikon responds with a creaky grunt of annoyance and shakes his head. The Imperator merely glares at the ruler of New Deshret, continuing to tap his fingers fiercely on a desktop. Periodically, he glances at his other monitor with the view of the grail. Whenever he does that, the Farikon in turn glances at his own other monitor with a view of the raw disk, as if to make a point. Moments took by, and then the dreaded sound comes. Maybe I'm the first to hear it because I feel a sensation of something deep rising, a barely perceptible disturbance along my skin, prickling the nerves, and I catch my breath. Now it's undeniable. The profound hum issues from the live-streaming feed of the grail, while at the same time the Farikon pulls the display of the Rajas closer, and we can hear the small gasp of the young assistant behind him. It returns. This is obviously not working, Cassiope. The expression on the Imperator's face is terrifying. For one long moment he does not answer, and then he very deliberately turns to the Farikon, saying, I will handle it, Hero. We'll call you back. And with a hard movement he disconnects the call. Let Gwen do the imperial oral block, father, Aeson says. Teach her, and teach me for that matter. No, the Imperator looks at his son like a dragon. We're going to the Stadion, now.